if you ever visit Lund Boats, take my advice. Do not forget these. Like I said, you've been warned. Today, the riveting story behind the Lund Boat legacy. <laughs> Get it? Riveting? People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this. Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. You know, it's kind of funny. There's something about boats. It's almost like flying, right? I don't know, maybe it's the freedom of where these things take you. If you know boats, you know this boat in the name, Lund. They've been an icon since the, really the 1940s, which is why I am so excited today to head north to New York Mills, Minnesota to see how Lund boats get made for the outdoors. New York Mills sits smack dab in the heart of Lake Country, a quaint Minnesota town of just over 1,000 people and a single iconic brand. Lund World Headquarters. Hey, fella. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome to Lund Factory. Um, Glad to be here. Holy moly. First things first, safety first. So we need our steel-toed shoes, our earplugs, and our safety glasses. So we'll get started with that. All right, ready to get started? All right, boys. Let's go see what this place is all about. Matt Geyser works on Lund's manufacturing team. I know you see this every day, but yeah. this is incredible. It's a long walk, like three football fields, literally, to cross Lund's main facility. Way down on the east end, our starting spot. This is just our parts department. This is where all the raw aluminum comes in and gets cut, stamped, bent. Into the raw parts that will eventually join together to form a boat. Even the president of the company is walking around. That's a big he just made a cameo. <laughs> and he's keeping an eye on us. We need to get cracking on a boat. You know, in any given week, there can be you know, anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on you know what time of year it is again. So. Does that mean it's time to go to work? It is. That's the bell. So the whole one story starts right here with all these towers of raw stock aluminum, eight to ten thousand pounds a piece every week. These shipments come in. These rolls go right over here to this thing they call the uncoiler or the decoiler, and then the process starts. The coiler unrolls and flattens sheets of aluminum, guided through very careful hands. All right, you guys show me. You still have all 10? Huh? All 10. <laughs> well, yeah, I it's a miracle. <laughs> Once cut, Workers tack down the aluminum. Hammer time. This is my new buddy, Nick. That's your computer. That's what we do, yeah. What's it doing? Drill sequence for a router cut. That computer controls cutting bits, what's called a CNC machine. This thing is really the DNA of a Lund boat. This computer has all the designs in it. And right now, that little blade is cutting all the individual pieces that will eventually be put together and turned into a boat. Watch that thing work.
workers, then, then the newly cut parts. A quick measure to make sure the angles are just right and the parts take shape. Raw components form stacks. Think individual ingredients of a recipe. A recipe that eventually forms a boat. As you can see, this is the back end of the boat. These are the transoms. It's the only tool I'm going to need today. Cleaning up your messes, right? There you go. Actually, I'm going to need something else. Get ready. Coming up. The sound of Lund's song. Think heavy metal music. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Splash Products, Access Covers, and by Game Fair. In New York Mills, Minnesota, crews work six days a week building on one boat's 70-year legacy. All right, so we're at the point. All the pieces are now cut and bent into shape by the guys. They've done a good job. Now, all this stuff is going over into this part of the factory. And I just got to tell you, you better have some of these. Riveting starts as the team squeezes sealant onto each seam. Then, they screw the sides and bottom together to hold pieces in place. The pieces of the puzzle coming together. Yep. Delmar Farrell has 18 years at one. Most of them spent right here on this gun. Good job. It's riveting. You want to try a couple? I can try. I mean, what's the technique? Riveters work in teams of two. The trigger man up top and the anchor below. So you're on top. Yep. And I'm on the bottom. Yep. I don't know if I know you well enough. I'm game for a party. How's it going? I'm Bill. Well, Bill, nice to meet you. You want to watch me do a couple first? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I settle in with Dalton under the boat. The literal pounding starts. We're in a 20 foot long Hanging on it with the machine. Drumming as a one boat comes to life. Lund riveters go through 31 tons of rivets a year. This job is tougher than it looks. <laughs> My work is a little rough. Getting rivets just right takes skill. Watch Delmar fly. This is what it sounds like inside a Lund boat. It's a built. Oh, I can't take it. Get me out. How many rivets do you do a day? I don't have a clue. A lot. A lot. Is your hearing still good? Let's get out of here. With the hull now watertight, the boat takes a quick dip in Lund's indoor pool. Pool or pond, you know. Even in calm water, the boat takes a pounding. And all she's doing is making sure that these things can take an absolute beating and won't leak a bit. Hydraulics hold the boat down underwater, under pressure. No leaks, and the hull passes. This one's got good tone. Mike is the next step in this whole process. And we've seen a lot of people with cool uniforms today, but yours is by far the coolest. I don't know about cool, it's warm. <laughs> it's warm. So what's your job in this whole deal? Uh, I'm the foamer. Yep, the foamer. 
the guy who gears up to spray a thick goulash of slowly expanding foam. Foam is all about safety in a boat, making sure that they always float and that they're always buoyant. It's like a life vest for a boat almost. Coming up, we start mixing paint and photographer Josh takes one for the team. There's no chance I'm going in there. You wouldn't catch me dead in there. Why would you go in there? You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Good job. Building Run Boats here in New York Mills, Minnesota has been a legacy since 1948. But you know, just because the rivets are in, the boat's still got a long ways to go before it gets to even this part of the line. After cutting, pounding, banging, my favorite part of the process, the art of colors. One's painting process starts with a pile of paper and tape. The team covers up each boat to make sure the urethane paint goes only where workers want it. Lund's custom colors go into the gun and the painter hits the trigger. So this is the brand new paint booth and they've got all kinds of ventilation systems for the painting of the boat, but there's no chance I'm going in there. You wouldn't catch me dead in there. Why would you go in there? You're doing a great job. Keep it up. You're doing great. The painter moves smoothly back and forth. In a matter of minutes, he covers the boat in a base layer, and then the final color, like that. Ta-da! The team wheels the finished boat out of the booth, right across the walkway to a pulp bunion-sized oven. The freshly painted boat gets locked in tight. You can feel the heat. 20 minutes, 240 degrees, cures the paint. Now they can do pretty much anything they want with that boat. 72 hours it'll be complete. But not before Gary Nelson's team gets cracking. Okay, so it's here on the line where the boat finally starts to take shape. The electric, the plumbing, the floors, the deck, the console, everything comes together here. The line starts with Rob, a jack of many trades. It'll come in on its side like this, and Robbie, he'll put in all the subfloor material, he'll run the engine harness, or the electrical harness, all the plumbing. That work takes about an hour. Then the boat rolls forward another 25 feet. This is called the carpet hardware station. Al, he's a master carpet layer. He'll put the floor down, and then he'll carpet the entire boat, vinyl the compartments. His partner, Dion, will take care of all the hardware, gunnel vinyl, cleats. So right here, it's starting to look... Like a boat. Like a boat. Front deck is lifted and put in with a crane. Uh, same thing happens in the back. Order up! So, this is called the kit cart. Every boat they build here on the line has one of these carts. The pickers go through and grab all the stuff that's going into the boat. And that way, the installers know exactly what's going in. Workers finish up the components with storage doors and travel tarps. Then cleaners zip through the entire boat. They do the vacuum and the touch-up. One by one, the boats move through finishing. Sure seems like they crank them out as fast as they can. Been like this for the 18 years I've been here, one after another. Makes you wonder, where do they all go? I know, there's a lot of them out there. Okay, so they get the boat finished right here on the line. Everything is in it. The boat is essentially complete. Wait, where is it? The best part's still coming up. I wonder if you can figure out what that might be. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, Open Air Solutions, and by Totem Resorts.
New York Mills, Minnesota often celebrates its biggest business. Main Street parties give you some idea just how much boats mean to this town, which is why Lund invited us with open arms to see exactly how employees build boats. With the Lund nearing completion, it goes to two key stations. The first quick stop, and I mean a quick one, right here. Now I'm gonna look at my memo, and I gotta find the graphic that's on my shelf, and it's Z16 RXS number 458. Going too fast. You're fast. <laughs> I am. Okay, then I take the MO out, and I match this serial number with the serial tag on my boat to make sure it matches, because sometimes it's wrong. So. That's Janine. She's got no time for screwing around. Wait up. Janine Weller hustles to give each Lund boat its name. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash the boat. You want me to wash the boat? I'll wash the boat for you. Well, if you want to. This is way better than ribbing, I'm just saying. After a wipe down, she gets cracking on logos. That's where my extension, double extension is gonna start. I'm gonna draw my line all the way to the front. Janine marks exact reference points measured for every model. Okay, then I'm gonna start squeegeeing it down. Make sure it ends up on my line. In a couple of seconds and a few quick swipes, voila. Yeah, they say I make it look easy when I train people in. They say you make this look easier than it is. I want to chat, but she just keeps on going. You get the point. You just brought that boat to life. Did I? <laughs> yeah, this is fun doing. In here, in this factory, you learn this is a special place with a pile of special people pouring their hearts into these boats which is why Todd Osmus puts the finishing touch and maybe the most important right on the back of the boat. So this darn boat would be a pain in the tail to row, which is why Todd is here. I'm gonna call you the motor man. Right on. This is a big old Mercury going on this thing. Yep. Todd's team mounts the motors adds throttles, wiring all the stuff that makes a motor fire. I've heard enough of that today. The basics of all of them are the same. It's just making sure you do everything right. How long have you been in the boat business? 16 years. And to think, Todd's the new guy. So I think it's kind of funny that you're the new guy here. A little story for you, see if I can get this right. So Todd's been here 16 years. Next to him is Mark, who's got 21 years. Over here is John, who's at 23. And then you've got Pete on the other side with 38 years. And then David on the end, he was here before some of these guys were even born. You do the math. That's a lot of years in rigging. It's like a legacy, just part of the long story. A story that ends with this sound. One covers and heat seals every boat to make sure it arrives at its destination absolutely spotless. The boat goes out the door and often right onto trucks headed to customers who dream of life on water. I love that sound. You know, it's funny, just a couple of days ago, this boat made its way down the line with Todd, Janine, Matt, and the rest of the team. But today it's my turn to have a little fun, sort of put this baby through the ringer.
boats. So much darn fun. It's such a cool story when you see how your favorite gear gets made. We'll see you next week. You're doing a great job. Keep it up.